Hey, good morning, it's Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. A question I get asked quite a bit, phone calls, emails, people asking me if I have an inside line on any investment properties. And I say, well, I do. I mean, I handle investment properties, but I handle the boring stuff. I handle the, let's get into a one bedroom, what I call a cream puff, buy it at a good price, fix it up a little bit, some cosmetic uh, upgrades if needed, and rent it out, and rent it out for a long time. 10, 15, 20 years. It's boring. You're not going to hit any grand slam home runs, but that's how money's made in real estate because you're getting equity or you're creating wealth two ways. Your tenant is paying down your debt and maybe even some positive cash flow and paying off some of the int uh, interest as well as the principal. And you're also getting uh, wealth, creating wealth by a price appreciation. Hopefully, over the long term, anyways, that property is going to appreciate. So you're paying down debt and price appreciation. But most where these conversations usually go is what about properties I can buy, fix up, and flip? Well, flipping is pretty much dead, not quite. There are a few people making money. These are very elite pros that are out there, full timers, trades guys who really know what they're doing. They've got some good agents, they know what to buy at, they know exactly what to put into these units and how much they're gonna get out of them. And even these pros, every four or five deals they end up breaking even or losing money on. They start into a renovation, get in over their heads, it turns out that it's a lot more work than they thought and they can take a bath on some of these. So when the pros are even losing money now and again, it is very difficult to make money in flipping. Now, wanted to give you a quick example. I see these things all the time on the MLS. Uh, this particular one I'll show you here is in Richmond, but I've seen these in Yale Town, Coal Harbor, Gastown, you name it. Just change the names and change the prices, but it's the same kind of scenario. Guy buys a, a, a condominium, 20, a 36 year old condo in Richmond. Uh, it's a concrete high rise, 12 floors. I know the building, it's okay, decent location, it's behind Richmond Square. He pays $300,000 for it a year ago. Two months later, he puts it back on the market after doing about a $20,000 reno to it. So I can see going to the MLS and I can see the listing when he bought it and then I can compare it to the photos now. So he's put in laminate floors, some new appliances, new IKEA cabinets, paint, looks okay, put in fifteen to $20,000. Two months later, he puts it on the market. He's into it now for 320, puts it on the market for 420. That's mistake number one. Buyers don't drop down from Mars. A guy's not gonna walk into his unit and say, oh, 420,000 for this apartment. Looks like a good deal, I'll take it. Most buyers are being escorted by other realtors. These other realtors are keeping their clients informed. They're showing them multiple properties showing them exactly what these properties are worth. So the chances of you getting $100,000 on a two month flip is n almost zero. It's not gonna happen. So you can imagine how this now goes over the next year. He's now reduced the price three more times. He's chasing it down. Um, the, he's now got it listed at $350,000. The days on market are up close to 300. So this thing is, is just lost in the MLS now. So. You know, these things I see all the time. I think if a guy came along and offered him 320 for this property right now, I would jump at it. I don't even think that's going to happen. So even if he sold it at 320 minus his property transfer tax when he purchased it, the 20000 he put in, and the real estate commissions he's going to have to pay to sell this unit, plus his holding costs for the last year, his soft costs, he's going to be lucky to not lose less than twenty dollars or $25,000 on this deal. Welcome to the world of flipping. And these happen every month I see these. My advice is be very careful about flipping. I like to buy properties, good rental properties, buy and hold. The flipping game is for an elite few. You really have to know what you're doing. And this guy made so many other mistakes that are just basic real estate 101. He obviously was his first deal. He never consulted anybody, never talked to some agents, got multiple feedback and multiple opinions on what he was going to do here. If he would have talked to me, I would have told him he's nuts. It's not going to happen. But one of the other, one of the basic mistakes he made in this particular building, no rentals are allowed, which is a huge mistake. I posted video blogs on rental restrictions before. At least with having by, by mail to rent these units, you've got a plan B. 
if you can't sell it after a year or six months or whatever, hey, why not rent it out for a year or two and then start all over again trying to sell it? The other thing is he's got an age restriction in this building of 19 plus and no pets. So no pets, no rentals, 19 plus. Wow, the demographic on who's gonna buy this unit, very, very lean. Anyways, happens all the time. I'm Owen Bigland, I'm running out of time. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something. I'll see you next time.